So have you ever started anything, maybe like a business, and you lose momentum or energy when it comes to making it to the end? Or maybe you do have the energy and momentum, but maybe some of the people that you work with in your business or on your team lose energy before they finish strong? If so, you might be wondering how some people never seem to ever slow down or get their team to slow down. And not only are they experiencing massive results, but they're also not burning themselves out either. And that's truly what I want to teach you guys here today. Because the truth is we were struggling with momentum for a long time. But once we leaned into the strategies we're going to be talking about here today, not only were we able to generate massive momentum when it comes to our health transformation, but we also did so in our business to get to the point where we both got to leave our jobs and come home to spend more time with our family and live the life we truly wanted. So if you're somebody who wants to generate that level of momentum, not only for you, but for your team, let's dive in. Now, before we begin, I want you to know that no matter your strengths or your weaknesses, no matter how much time you do or don't have, or no matter what environment you're in, these strategies actually work. And I'm not only saying it from my personal experience, even though all three of those things were things that I was struggling with, but from many of the other people that I've helped coach to help them see the success that they want to. The reason why I start with this is because if you don't believe it's possible for you, everything you're going to hear in this video next is going to be irrelevant and it's not going to help you at all. But let me just say, if I was able to come from a negative, toxic, and everyone was out for themselves kind of environment to becoming the business owner that I am today, it is possible for you too. With that being said, let's talk about how to become an unstoppable force in your business and really your life. This all begins with creating momentum. I like to think about it like a freight train. And that is like when you have momentum on your side, nothing will be able to stop you not even a block wall. But if you have no momentum, which could be just a little rubber brick that you put in front of the train, if it's not moving, it's actually impossible to get it moving until you remove that block. So today, we're gonna make sure that you don't have any rubber blocks in your business. Now, here's the thing. As a leader and as a business owner, it is your responsibility to create momentum, not only for your business and your clients, but also for your team. Remember, leaders know the way, they go the way, and they show the way, which means you have to first experience it for yourself, which is the purpose of today's video. Then I want you to go out and share this strategy that you're gonna hear from me today, but always make sure that you're implementing it first, because if you're not modeling that behavior, people are not likely to follow behind you. So how do you create massive momentum? And then once you have it, how do you protect it at all costs? There's two parts to this equation when it comes to creating momentum. The first part, is your energy. I mean, think about it logically. In order for you to create massive momentum, you need to have massive amounts of energy to be able to push you through, especially when you're taking off. We've all heard the analogy of like an airplane trying to take off from the airport. It needs like 80 to 100% of its power in order to get into the air. And then once it gets into the air, it can slow down and use less power to actually get it to its main destination. It's the same thing when it comes to momentum and energy in your life. Now, when I say energy, I don't mean energy like Mark or energy like some of your mentors or some people out there who may have a high level of motivation. We all have our different caveats when it comes to our energy. And I don't want you to think that your energy needs to look like somebody else's. That's the comparison game. It is not helpful at all. But I'm sure we all can think about times when we've had massive energy in our lives and it seemed like anything that came our way, it was very easy to tackle because our brain was functioning at full capacity. There's probably been times when you felt like how I feel sometimes, and that is super low energy, and even the smallest things seems to take over the entire day. This is why we really need to tap into our energy so that we can create that massive momentum we need. Now, how do you do that? I wanna share some strategies with you here real quick that help me tap into the energy I need to keep showing up. Now, one caveat here is I have something called Crohn's disease which is actually an autoimmune disease that when I do have massive energy, sometimes it actually hinders me when it comes to my health. So I had to be very careful and make sure that only the energy that I fueled myself with was actually the healthy kind that wouldn't actually hurt my physical and mental health. And here's what I found. The first way I generate energy is through my own personal health journey. Like they say, it's kind of hard to pour from an empty cup. So when I was 100 pounds overweight, I wasn't taking my health seriously. I wasn't drinking water and I definitely wasn't moving or exercising. Everything else in my life was harder too. But when I started to take care of myself, when I just started to get a few extra steps, make a couple better decisions when it comes to eating into water, it truly changed the trajectory of my energy and I was able to show up on an entirely different level. So really think about you and your health journey. How can you elevate your health journey so that you can generate massive amounts of energy? And it doesn't have to be this huge overhaul either. I don't want people to think you have to do a complete 180. Even one little decision of eating one healthier meal a day is all you need to start generating that energy. 
Don't overcomplicate it. Just dive in. Now, another way that I generate energy is through my personal development and personal growth. I don't know about you, but whenever I'm growing, whenever I'm learning something new, whenever I have a mentor that I'm leaning into, it gets me more excited, not only to share that information with the people I lead, but also to go out and implement it in my life. When I'm not learning, when I'm not plugging in some good things in here, I realize it's very easy for me to get off course with my energy. So what could this look like? It could look like the books that you're reading, the videos that you're watching, the workshops you're part of, maybe a mentor, maybe a coaching team, maybe a mastermind, maybe a podcast, maybe an audiobook. There's many different ways, but I've noticed that anytime that I'm leading into something that I'm excited about and I'm learning something new, it helps generate more energy in my life that I can use in multiple other areas. Now, another way is my environment, which for me is the people that I surround myself with. Here's what's crazy is being a life coach. I understand how thoughts, beliefs, actions, feelings, all of those things are actually contagious. Isn't it so much easier when we're hanging around with high energy, high positivity people to start becoming that ourselves? And isn't it much easier when people are like hanging around the water cooler and gossiping for us to lean into that too? It's just the way that we are as humans. So why not use that for us? So find ways of getting around higher energy people or at least people who help you create more energy. Now, here's the thing. If I'm not that person, if you're like, Mark, you have a little bit too much energy, please go find someone else. It's everybody is attracted to a certain level of not only energy, but also excitement. And if I'm not your jam, please don't make that mean that it's not possible for you. Find somebody who is. Now, the next thing that helps me generate more energy is the adventures that I take. Meaning, how many times have you done something new that you're not used to doing? Maybe something like an awesome vacation with your family. Maybe something entirely different in your business. Whenever I schedule something, I will typically do it like three months in advance. And the main reason for that is because I want to actually have the excitement and the buildup of that thing. Because a lot of times when I actually experience it, it isn't as good as the thoughts and beliefs that I had leading up to it. Haven't you ever taken a vacation like that? Where as a matter of fact, leading up to it, you were more excited and it was more fun when it was in your brain than when you actually went there. If you got kids, you know what I mean. For this one, I really want you to ask yourself, what is an adventure? What is something that I haven't done recently? Maybe with my significant other, my family, my kids, my health, that will help me generate new energy by just doing something that I'm not used to. Now, the last thing that helps me generate massive energy is living within my core values. Now, there's an exercise that I did on my channel. I'll link to the workshop a little bit later. But basically, it talked about when you create goals in your life, you have to make sure they're in alignment with your core values. These are the things that are near and dear to you. Sometimes what I realized is I would get to the end of the day and I wouldn't feel like I had fulfilled my purpose or my passion or reached my potential. And when I realized it, when I was able to look into it, I actually found it's because I was not living within my core values or I was just living into one and not even thinking about the other ones. Now for me, my core values are health, family, impact, and integrity. I take you through that exercise inside of one of the workshops to really help you identify this because once you actually are able to pull it out, you can now see that when those things are flowing through other areas of your life, you have massive amounts of energy. And when they're not, or when you're only leaning into one, you'll realize that you start to feel a little bit weird and depleted because you're not leaning in to the things that matter most to you. So I want to ask you, how might you generate more energy? Maybe it's your personal health journey. Maybe it's your personal development, personal growth. Maybe it's your adventures. Maybe it's leaning into your core values, or maybe it's leaning into your environment. I don't want you to be caught up in the fact that I just named five. I want you to pick one and I want you to go all in with that this week. Now, once you have this energy, we got to get onto the second piece of this equation. But before we do, I want to make sure that you protect this energy at all costs. One of the things that's very easy is once you like start to excel in one area is you let the foot off the gas so that you can spend time and energy in the other. I don't want you to do that because without this energy, what I'm about to say next is not going to be helpful at all. But if you're able to lean in, you're able to put up some boundaries and make sure that you lean into those things that help create that massive energy, what I'm going to share next is going to change the game for you forever. Oh, and if you're enjoying this video so far, definitely smash the like button. And let's jump right into the second part of creating momentum, which is your commitment. Now, commitment is defined as an obligation that restricts freedom of action. It means you're going to do it not until it gets hard, but you're going to do it until it gets done. Can you just feel the energy when you think about that? Try even saying it out loud. I'm committed to doing this not just until it gets hard, but until it gets done. The feelings that generates and the action that comes after that will make you unstoppable as long as you have the energy that we talked about first. Now, Grant Cardone has this great quote. It says, it's not the smartest or the brightest or the most prepared. It's those who can commit most passionately to their cause. I really love this. 
Because so many times people think it's the people who have the best skills that succeed, but it's not. It's the people who are most committed to their cause. As a matter of fact, they're so committed, they actually develop the skills and bypass all those people who just have those skills and haven't reached the level of commitment they need to be at. Now, one of the ways that I do this is I remind myself of my commitment, especially before game day. As a matter of fact, I did it right before I recorded this video. I started to think about who was going to be watching this video and who needed me on my A game. And when I think about who needs me on my A game, it puts me into the zone. I'm no longer worried about what I look like, what I sound, how many mistakes I make. Thanks, Kurt, for fixing those. But instead, I'm in a service mindset of there's somebody out there who needs to hear this message. And once they do and lean into your energy and your commitment, they're going to change their lives forever. And it takes the focus off of me and puts it on you. Now, there's two more pieces to this commitment that we have to make sure that we stay true to. Number one, and we kind of hinted about it in the beginning, and that is showing up no matter how you feel. Now, having Crohn's disease, there's going to be days and times where I really can't show up the way that I want to. But I always find ways either to ask other people to step up or to do the bare minimum so that I don't completely let my foot off the gas and still get the recovery that I need so that I can get back at it the next day. But if you're waiting for a feeling before you take that action, you're not focusing on what's really important, which is the stories, the thoughts, and the beliefs that are in here. When you believe beyond a reasonable doubt that you will put in the time, the energy, and the commitment to achieve your goals, there is nothing that will stop you, especially a feeling. Because you can go in and find a thought that will actually fuel you to take the actions you need to take. That's literally what we do as life coaches. And if that's ever something you want to learn about, please hit me up. And the last part is being unmoved by the opinions of others. I remember when my mentor and coach Josh Coates first talked about this. Because I was so like trapped into what other people would say or other people would do that it would literally throw me off course. Remember, when we commit to something, that means we have made a decision to do it until it's done. And if anybody else has opinions or ideas, I'm willing to be open to constructive criticism and feedback, but I'm unwilling to change what I'm doing when the haters come out and try to hate. Now, what's crazy is sometimes those haters are very easy to identify, but also some of them are the people who are closest to us. They're the people who are trying to protect us and they really love us. And they mean good, but it's not helpful in any respect. That's why we have to be unmoved by the opinions of others. And a little hack for this is make sure you're hanging around with other people whose opinion you truly do matter. Because I got to tell you, the people who are getting after it are never going to tell you to minimize what it is that you're doing, just like you wouldn't tell them to minimize what they are. So I want to ask you, how can you remind yourself of your commitment? And then once you have it, how can you protect your commitment at all costs? Now, I want to share a list of questions that will help you see that you've actually created momentum and were true to your commitments, even if it was another area of your life. So listen to this video, let it play. And as I ask these questions, I want you to brainstorm some different ideas so that we can find the gold in your past successes. Are you ready? So I want you to reflect back on a time when you had momentum on your side. You were unstoppable. You had the energy and you committed to taking action. Not only that, but you were following through with a high level of energy, even in the beginning when you weren't getting immediate results. Now, I want you to think, what were you doing that helped you create that momentum? What was helping you create extra energy? What was making you feel more committed to the cause? Was it because there was something out there that you really wanted? Or was it because you hit rock bottom and you were unwilling to ever be there ever again? Once you created that momentum, what did you do to protect it at all costs? I mean, there's probably some of those things that you still do today. And it's just a matter of fact. It's a matter of habit. You don't even have to think about it anymore. But what did you do in the interim to make sure that you didn't get off course? I also want to ask you, were you affected by the opinions of others? Or did it not matter what other people thought? Now, there's one caveat to this. And I remember having this conversation with my coach. They were talking about their significant other getting them off track in their business. And I remember he asked, do you have a really great TV show that you watch? And she said that she would love to watch the Kardashians. He said, well, let me ask you this. Does your husband watch the Kardashians? She's like, no, absolutely not. He absolutely hates it. He said, so why are you doing anyway? She said, well, because I decided that I'm going to do this and I don't care what he thinks about this. I actually enjoy it. So then he asked her, then why don't you do the same thing with your business? Is your business just as important as watching a TV show? And it was at that point that the light bulb went on. Guys, you don't always have to agree and be on the same page with everybody in your life, especially your spouse. If you know that in the end, it's going to benefit everybody, think about the power when you stay true to that, you create it, and it actually has an exponential effect on your life. At that point, they're probably going to be thinking about it a lot differently, and you're going to be proof that it's possible for others too. Now, based off of those questions that I just asked, what is some of the gold that you pulled from your own experience 
And how can you use it moving forward for you so that you can create the momentum you truly deserve? Then I want you to take this training and actually teach it and train it to others. The best way that you can do this is modeling the behavior yourself. And the second best way for you to learn this even deeper is to start teaching it to others. Now you might get to this point in this video and be super pumped about creating momentum, but you're unsure how to inspire and motivate other people, especially when it comes to the words that you use to communicate. Don't worry, I've got you covered. Tap the screen to watch this next video, which talks about how leaders speak so others will listen. Definitely subscribe to the channel if you found this video to be helpful, and thank you for what you do out there every single day. Keep leading from the front.